Back here on WICR on Live365.com or on Ustream.com. Just search WICR. It's the BS Report. John Sanko being joined here with Kevin Bartnett. And before we close the show this evening, Kevin Bartnett's got to talk NFL free agency. He's got to have his got to have his NFL. He's upset the NFL draft is so far away. But it's been two yeah. week it's been two weeks since our show. A lot has happened in NFL free agency. A lot of some big signings. So Kevin, in the past two weeks, what has really stuck out to you in NFL free agency? Dominic Rogers, Cromarty, Walter Thurman, Rashad Jennings, Jeff Schwartz, resigning John Beeson. All that. I love the work that my Giants do. Oh, Jameel McLean, another one I forgot. Look, it's not about making the best There's moves. There's no like, bias on this it's show. It's about making whatsoever. the right moves. It's about making the right moves. No, in all seriousness now, look. The, like the, I mean, look, I love the moves my Giants are making, but in, in all seriousness now, I love the Darrell Rivas move after losing to Keeb Tlaib. Mm -hmm. That's a head-scratcher, the amount of money that Denver did give him, I'll be honest. Mm -hmm. But uh, the moves the Broncos have been making, making a legit defense, I think what the most underrated sign the Broncos did though, was signing Emmanuel Sanders. I, you, you think so? Yes. I, I think that he'll step right in and be no be no problem. Could even be better than Decker. I mean, Honestly, uh, Sanders looks. Well, Payton pay man can make a lot of receivers better. Exactly, but I mean, I think Decker was one of those guys. He made mm -hmm. better, so uh, I think the Jets overpaid for Decker. I think Decker is a good guy. He's definitely going to be um, an improvement in their offense. But they run a very with Marty Morningwag's offense. They're very. Ex that's a very ex with Michael Vick now coming and competing with Geno Smith. They're going to try and be a little more explosive, I think. Mm -hmm. And Decker's not an explosive receiver. Yeah, I don't think. I, I agree with you. He's a very good possession receiver. He's got he, good hands. He's a guy who runs 12 yards. Will get the first down, and then he get, he's a good red zone target too. Had a lot of touchdowns. Um, but I don't think Michael Vick and Geno Smith are not Peyton Manning as well. No, no. So uh, no, uh, no, <laughs> not even close. I think the best signing of the offseason though was hands down was the Denver Broncos adding Demarcus Ware. You think the Denver Broncos? Not even, adding... a, not even a contest. Uh, I love some moves teams made. I love the Patriots getting Darrell Revis and Brandon Browner. But look, the Patriots still need an outside receiver. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think Brandon LaFell. I think he's a good player. I don't think he's the answer though. Um, I, I, lo I love too many moves a lot. Like uh, Jarris Bird in New Orleans, another great move. Mm -hmm. Him and Kenny Vaccaro could be maybe Earl Thomas and Cam Chancellor. No, I okay. don't like what Seattle Seahawks have been doing now. You do not. Why no, is that? They have lost Golden Tate. They have another good move by Detroit. Very Sorry. good move by Detroit. Very very good move. Good move by Detroit. They've lost Walter Thurman to my Giants. Mm -hmm. So then and then they don't have Brandon Browner anymore to the New England Patriots. That's right. Uh, they they had to release Red Bryant. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I the rumors are with them and Jared Allen have been like heating up, but. I mean, Jared Allen, it was reported that he signed there, and he's like, no, 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 I didn't sign there. I went there to talk, I and mean, then nothing's happened since. It's huge that they re-signed Michael Bennett. That was a huge move yes. for them. But they, they've lost a lot of players. But granted, I do believe in them because Pete Carroll's done wonders for them. Through the draft, they'll do fine, I think. Mm -hmm. But with free inch, I consider them a loser, honestly. So you consider them a loser? I consider them on even keel, not a winner or a loser. I mean, well, I'll see how they do in the draft, actually, because Pete, Pete Carroll has hit on so many of these picks. Mm -hmm. Sherman, uh, who else? I mean – Earl Thomas being a first-round pick, uh, Cam Chancellor in the fourth round. Mm -hmm. They hit on a lot of these picks, so I, I would expect that. But free agency-wise, I don't think they've done enough. Okay. Uh, look, they don't have who, who do they have now to play wide receiver? They have Percy Harvin, but he he will not exactly. play a full season. Golden Tate was their, own, was their only real reliable receiver last year. He's gone. And they cut Sidney Rice. Sidney Rice recall. is gone. Yep. So they don't really have a legit like wide receiver besides Percy Harvin. I don't think they have Zach Miller anymore in the tight end. Uh, I'm not sure if they do. Who, who, not not, not a bad player. Was was quite reliable though. Mm -hmm. um, um, just I'm looking at yeah, I'm looking at a lot like the list of like free agents. Uh, the Oakland Raiders stealing my Justin Tuck, you know, and then they made another. They made a they acquired Matt Schaub, uh, and James Jones. So I think that they're going to be a little bit better maybe than they were last year. I think they made a mistake choosing McFadden over Rashad Jones. I agree with you completely. Thank you there, uh, Raiders, very much. Mm -hmm. But no, um, more so. Um, like a lot of these Seahawks are going to Jacksonville now. Also, see, I, I see at least three different Seahawks because uh, Gus Bradley was the former Seattle defensive coordinator. So, Tampa Bay is bringing in a lot of guys. Altron Vernon. They had so much money, so they had to bring in some people. Michael Johnson. What uh, do you think of Antonio Camardi going to Arizona? Uh, I don't. I don't know how much that actually does for their team. I think it makes them better. I mean, he's a good guy to play opposite Patrick Peterson, who's a stud. Yeah. Patrick Peterson, one of the best lockdown corners in the I NFL. I was not expecting that at all. That one. Came, I got that update from ESPN. I was like, wow. I was not even thinking Arizona was on the radar, but obviously. Uh, Bruce Arians is doing a lot of good things with them. Agreed. Agreed. So, they uh, they came very close to the playoffs last year. No one expected ten it. Ten and six last yeah, year. So, yeah. So uh, I mean, I think that they're they're definitely building on something. I, there. I, they got to keep Fitzgerald. Uh, Carson Palmer. I don't buy him at all. But no, neither do I. Let's see what they do with the draft too. They're gonna have their first round pick. Well, Actually, plays your Jonathan Cooper. Oh, really? The guard mm -hmm. who was a seventh mm -hmm. overall pick. Why are you taking a guard seven overall? Good player. So, mm -hmm. 
Um, I'm looking at other uh, lists of other guys here that are like there's not many great guys are still available. Like I said, I love the Emmanuel Sanders signing for Denver. Though. I, I agree with you. I think it's a good signing. I'm not buying into it as much as as other people are, uh, because I mean we'll see how he plays with with as much talent around him. Because he was he was kind of the number one target in Pittsburgh. It was it was him. He was he was the guy. But you have so much talent around Peyton Manning in other receivers, Demarius Thomas. You have good running backs as well. I wouldn't really say Sanders was the guy. I say Antonio Brown is more the guy. I mean, I mean, I consider them one too. I consider them on equal playing fields. Uh, well, I'm we only can... saying this because I'm biased. Because Brown was my my fantasy guy. And okay, Brown, well there you go. Brown, first player in NFL history, have five catches and 50 yards in every single game this year. There you go. That's really like impressive. I think. Uh, other like small moves that like, I think that that can make a huge difference. I actually just saw like Cleveland Browns are making a lot of moves. They are making good moves. Well, I mean, they, they are a quarterback away from being a good team. Dante, they have a lot of talent as it is. They had a lot of talent. Exactly. Last they year. are a quarterback away yeah. from being a good team. I like the they ben, need a quarterback. I like the Ben Tate edition for them, and then they got Dante Whitner, Carlos Dansby. Mm-hmm. Um, I agree with you. I really think that if they get a quarterback, they can compete in that division because that division is not that strong. Yeah, it's really not. I mean, Steve Smith of the Ravens, another good. I good think that's signing. a. I think that is a great signing for the. Ra- Steve Smith fits the mold of the Ravens it, so well. If Ray Rice has a bounce back year, that's a good signing for them. Very, very good very, signing. I mean, yeah, they have work to do on the defensive end. I think still too, but uh, with the Ravens, you can never count them out. With the mm-hmm. Ravens, um. Uh, I just, I, I, wow, I just saw a move that I would like really like. Oh, no, I didn't see it on here, but like they came in my head when the no, 49ers lost Dante Whitner. Mm. I thought they made a great veteran signing in Antoine Bethea. I agree with a you. Long time in Indianapolis. Long time in Indianapolis. Very Cole. consistent safety throughout his whole career. He'll be mm-hmm. a great mentor to the rising star, Eric Reed. Mm-hmm. Eric I, Reed I, is a rising star. I agree with you. That, that was a very good signing. I want to get your. Uh, gets your impressions on Maurice Jones-Drew. He's probably the only decent running back left uh, in free agency. He's visited the Pittsburgh Steelers, the New York Jets, the New England Patriots, and the Miami Dolphins. I want to get your take on which of those four teams you think he'd be best fit for. Uh, actually, like uh, of all the teams, like I think he's going to want to win. If you want to win, you go to New England or Pittsburgh. Yes. But I think with where scheme-wise, where he actually fits best is Miami. You think he fits best in Miami? Because, look, they already have a nice speed back in Lamar Miller. Well, he did nothing last year. He was a bust. Uh, well, he had some good games. He was, I drafted him in fantasy. He was a bust. Uh, he had good some good games last year. Okay, Daniel that was after Thomas. I it. Dan, no, Daniel Thomas, I do not buy whatsoever. Uh-huh. I think with the, the Lamar Miller's speed, and then you have bringing like he'll be like the lightning. And you bring in a thunder guy like Maurice Jones Drew. That's a good. That's a good scheme right there. Ryan Tannehill, he's steadily getting better. Ryan Tannehill, they got good receivers in Hartline and Mike Wallace. Charles Clay emerges a very good tight end last yeah, yes, year. Yes, yes. I mean, they made a signing with Brandon Albert on the offensive line to repair that. Whatever is going on with that offensive line down there, because <laughs> Lord knows what what's going on. We'll see what yeah, we'll see yeah. what happens with that. Uh, they've always had they even recently they've always haven't had a good defense. Mm-hmm. I mean, they lost Paul Salai, which is a huge loss. For them. I I think that's a huge loss. That that interior run game, he was very good for that, and that's not going to be as strong. Paul Salai signing with Atlanta, but um, they they were able to re up with Randy Stark, so maybe they'll use more Deion Jordan this year. You, you forgot uh, for Christ's sake, you you took him in the th- with the third overall pick, and he played yeah. what like thirty percent of the snaps. Yeah, he didn't play. Yeah, he didn't play much last year. And he exactly. was good when he actually played, got, saw action. So um, they, they, I like their signing of Corlin Finnegan as well. He, he struggled on Jeff Fisher. He's but, a loudmouth. You want know to see the thing with Corlin Finnegan is if you watch E60 on him, he has a heart of gold off the field. Does he really? He's, he's a, just he's that once he gets in between the in between the sidelines, he's just he, that type of guy. He said like and the first thing in the E60 thing on Cortland Finnegan was like the names people call him. He says he actually likes it, but he says he was taught when he played football to get the other teams had off the field. He's a great guy though. Why wow, I'm telling you, you, you say you say why wow, read the thing on Manhattan, watch the E60 on Cortland Finnegan. I will. Watch it. I will take you. It up will on change that. your opinion of him as it did with me. I will take you up on that. Yes. Uh, okay. Speaking of me selfishly, I would love Maurice Jones Drew to come to the Patriots because last year the Patriots struggled in the red zone. It was not it, it was not a surprise to anyone. Rob Gronkowski out. There was no big target for Brady to look for. And frankly, Rob Gronkowski's health, it's always up in the air. You cannot rely on him. I would love to have Maurice Jones Drew at the ten yard line, just him pound and carry defenders for five yards at a time and pound into the goal line. Yeah, that that that's that makes especially with sense. us does not with us not re-signing Laguerre Blunt. Yes, I was gonna ask actually, what's up with that situation? He, it, it looks like the Patriots aren't gonna re-sign him. I, I then, honestly don't know where he's gonna go. Which I'm surprised by. It seemed like Belichick lost a lot of confidence in Stephen Ridley the, during throughout the year last mm-hmm. year. That's he, another thing though. You bring in Maurice Jones Drew, you you bring in a veteran to teach Stephen Ridley how to hold on the Stephen football. Stephen Ridley two years ago was very good running back. Had a very good year. He has a ton of talent. He just has butterfingers. Yeah. 
Uh, stone hands, as people like to call him, yeah. from what I heard. So uh, he lo- lost a lot of confidence in, in Stephen Ridley, but uh, I think he still has, can be a very good player. I think he just had a bad year. Ru- not mm-hmm. bad. I don't think he even had a bad year. Just a little rough year last mm-hmm. year. A lot of it got through his head. I mean, he, I mean, he like almost passed out on the field in the AFC Championship game. I mean, well, granted, Bill Belichick, if you fumble, you sit. <laughs> yeah, it's it's the it's the law unless you're Tom Brady. I mean, some surprising running back. Some people I still still see that are free agents. Uh, two Broncos, Sean Phillips, no Sean Moreno. I'm surprised no Sean Moreno hasn't gotten picked up. That's anywhere. a guy I think would scheme wise would fit great with New England. I agree with you, but I think we already kind of have him with Stephen Ridley. I think I think that's I think it's the same type of player. Uh, Owen Daniels, Jermichael Finley, two great tight ends. Jermichael Finley injury though, how who's going to take a risk on him? That's very very true. Um, Nobody, I mean, Brian Arakpo and Jimmy Graham are still technically can be offered contracts. From mm-hmm. other, oh, wait, no, they cannot actually have been franchised, so they can only negotiate with their current teams. That's Alex Mack. That's Alex Mack, yes. But no one, it seems like, wants to, uh, no one seems like wants to risk losing a draft pick for Alex Mack. Uh, Ryan Pickett, a talented defensive tackle for Green Bay, still mm-hmm. a free agent. Uh, some good names. Uh, do you, what about the market for a guy like some quarterbacks, so like Josh Freeman? Do you think he gets a job? I don't think he goes anywhere. I think especially with Matt Schaub going to Oakland, I think that maybe Josh Freeman was looking at Oakland as a possibility, but I think that that door is now closed. Mm-hmm. I think if Freeman goes anywhere, it's in a backup role. I don't think he gets a shot at a starting job. Uh, just like Mark Sanchez, he's going to sign, I think, back up with Philadelphia is what it looks like. He's not going to get a shot at a starting job. I heard the Giants job. are interested in him actually as a backup. Really? Which I would not like because I have, really think they should try and develop Ryan Nassib. Well, but I I heard Philadelphia. That that was the yes. I heard, heard that that's the likely landing spot though. Um, there's Miles Austin is still a free agent. I don't think I really Miles Austin. I think he might be a right before the season kind of signing. Because, He's 29 years old though, but so. he is banged up like a 35 year old wide receiver. I can actually I actually agree with you. I can see that though. Like you know, like before season ends, you know, you get to maybe a, t- t- a contender has some injuries. Like hey, exactly. bring in Miles Austin. He can learn the system fast. Exactly. I have, he'll be rested, so I can. I actually, you know, I like your thinking there, Stanko. I like that a lot. Sometimes I have good yeah, ideas. That was, it that happens was, from time to time. Sometimes it happens yes. from time to time. Were, sometime. yeah, no. Before I, before we go though, the big signing was Michael Vick. It was signed by the New York Jets to compete for the starting job with Geno Smith. And before we go, I gotta get your idea on: Do you think it's gonna be a competition? And if so. Do you, who do you think wins it, Geno Smith or Michael Vick? Do I think it will be a competition? No, because I think Michael Vick is going to be the starting quarterback for the. You year think Jets. Michael Vick is going to be starting quarterback? And Rex Ryan, he he's his job is year to year now, mm-hmm. so I don't think he wants to rely on Geno Smith to try and help him keep his job. I mm-hmm. think he needs to get a, put some. Like first off, I think he should have had gotten a three year extension with how well he coached last year. The he, Jets, he, the New Jets, Jets should overachieved. Not, should not have been eight and eight. No, no way. They should, should not have been eight. It should have been what four, what four and twelve probably. Yes. I think that would have been more reasonable. And Rex Ryan deserves a ton of credit for. He was a good last year. I thought it was even better than maybe possibly the AFC Championship games. He took his team still because mm-hmm. those teams had talent on them. This team had no talent whatsoever. But he's done it. He's doing really well with guys like Sheldon Richardson. I think D. Milliner can develop into a really good cornerback. He showed potential towards the end last year. Mm-hmm. But I think when he has to fight for your job, you go with the veteran. The guy who knows it was better a quarterback from Marty Morningwag's system, and mm-hmm. that's Michael Vick. Who has had a ton of success with Marty Morningweg? I agree with you. I think Michael Vick should start, but I'm going to be honest with you. I don't see him starting the start of the, the beginning of the season for the New York Jets. I think we'll, I think they're going to fall into the same trap they always have, and I I really see that Rex Ryan sticking to his guns, saying Geno Smith. I mean, he said in the interview yesterday he's going to be tough to beat, and I think he's going to start off the season. I don't think it's going to be right, but that's just what my gut is telling me that right. Geno Smith's going to start. Where you give Rex Ryan a ton of credit is he's always been he he's always got his players' backs. Oh, always got his players back. He's a players coach. Yes, to um, a T. To a T, he's a players coach. I think coach. That he's got to look out for himself now, because Idzik and him clearly don't get along. Mm-hmm. John Idzik, and with well, John Idzik hasn't hasn't given him much talent to work with. Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, Sheldon Richardson. I mean, Rex Ryan knew what he was doing with that. I mm-hmm. mean, look, I'm I'm not a Rex Ryan fan, but he was dead on about Sheldon Richardson, mm-hmm. defensive rookie of the year. Uh, they don't have a secondary though. This year, Rex Ryan's really going to have to work that, or that defense magic. Especially they, with no Antonio Cromarty. They don't have a secondary. They, they lost out on Dominic Rodgers, who were, they were interested in. They lost him out onto the Giants, who now have one of the best secondaries in football. But, <laughs> uh, on paper at least, so hopefully that works out. Um, but uh, they don't really have much to work with in the secondary. they got to look corner in the draft at 18 overall. They have to look at one uh, safety. Um, they, don't have a lot of, they don't have a lot of depth in the secondary right now. It's, it's gonna be interesting. Concern. It's gonna be interesting this to see what happens. This is a good year to have a second or first, uh, per, excuse me, a second first round pick. This is very true. This is very. And they true. lost out on Revis to the Patriots, so they've been losing out on a lot of people. Revis Island has been brought so to Fox. Uh, some, something is wrong here because I mean, look, they got Decker, but they also apparently offered Decker a lot more money than every team is willing to pay for mm-hmm. him. Um, 
the, the, the Vic signing, you were right about them and the Vic getting going to the Jets because Oakland got shop. So, yep. um, I'm excited to see. Actually, I'm look. I'm not a Jet fan. I actually, quite frankly, like when they lose. I I take solace. I agree with you in that as a Patriots fan. I take solace in them when they lose. I really do. But I'm excited to see what they can they do actually this year. Look, I'm I like Sheldon Richardson as a football player. Mm. Uh, Muhammad Wilkerson, another good player. Muhammad Wilkerson, very uh, very good. They got a very good defensive line. Um, Linebackers, you know, Rex Ryan's really gonna have to do that work. The magic this year, though, he really is. Well, we'll see what happens. Yes. I know you're counting on the dates of the NFL draft. I know Um, May 11th, I think it is, which. I'm not happy about because like normally it'd be one month from today. <laughs> Last year was April 25th. It's March 25th. It'd be one month from today. And I gotta wait an extra two weeks. Now. Before Bartnett breaks down into tears, we're gonna end that <laughs> one here on the BS Report. I want to thank you everyone for tuning in and listening. We'll be back next week at 8 p.m. as well. For Kevin Barnett, I'm John Stanko. Have a good night, everyone. Baylor in the Final Four. <laughs>